Merlin, Network Magic, adding tests. Hey everybody, John Capobianco here, and uh, there's been a couple of videos I've put together, the teaser and then the full video about using PyATS and its framework and libraries, particularly its ability to run arbitrary commands and its ability to FTP files, as well as uh, learn the configuration of a device and do differentials, the entire suite of PyECS tests and framework and libraries. But what we had done is generate an intended config. Let's get the whiteboard out here and go over this. Right, so what we have is a YAML file, YAML, you know, that has things like hosts, host underscore interfaces. I'm just going to put ints, right? And it has GI1 and then GI1's description, right? A human readable data model plus the Jinja2 template that has the configuration stanzas that plug in, you know, this description as the variable, uh, you know, description. These two combined give us our intent. And now that we have an intended config in iOS XE, this isn't JSON or anything, this intended config is a, um, a, a I don't want to say a human readable, but yes, a human readable and a network iOS XE device readable configuration. It's got to be valid. Has to start with the version, has to end with end. In between here, it has to be valid iOS XE configuration stanzas that we've generated as our intent. We then use FTP to send this to an FTP server. Then we use the device, we trigger the device. This is our target router, let's say TR, target router. We tell the target router to go download the intended config into boot flash and then trigger the config conf replace. So all of that's been working and that's the big video and the preview video and that's good so far. Now, can we do some state validation, some assurance to our configuration that we haven't, one, haven't damaged the environment and two, that we've actually brought up the service or services that we're attempting to bring up. I submit to you we can using that same framework that I've described, but actually using it for what its intended purpose is, tests. Can we test after, test this device, after we've updated its configuration with a declarative intended config? It's got a full new configuration now. Can it, can it ping its upstream router? Is this ping test still working? That's what we're going to be doing is pinging the default gateway of the GI1 on this device to confirm that whatever intent we've pushed to the device hasn't destroyed that ability for the device to forward data, the, the, the purpose of its existence. The next thing we're going to do is bring up a new interface, let's say loopback 100, LO100, and then can we ping it after it's been provisioned? And the neat thing is, based on the pass or fail results, can we trigger a rollback? Can we go back and undo that config that we've just applied? add some intelligence, some assurance. Now I want to be honest and open up here about how I want to do it and I believe it's possible. After the config replace command, let me show you this in the code, it's easier to show than tell. Here, 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 here where we're saying device configure device replace and then we do the replace force. What we can do is add the time and then an X, right, 15 or 5, the number in minutes that we open up a window 
that unless told to commit or told to extend that window, the router will roll back automatically. Um, I believe that it needs to be 100%. Um, if you look at what's happening here, the force is actually working. Uh, but when I added the time command, it wasn't quite working. I, it was, it gave me an error, but it tried five times and then it didn't actually store the archive. So I have to look deeper into that. But I did find a workaround that works for most cases. Now, what the time command would, would, would secure, like if I go into the intended config, the data model, if I change this address, I, I won't be able to get back into the, right? I've broken this router. And the loop, the time, the rollback feature would say, okay, John hasn't issued the commit within the five minutes. I'm going to roll back to 10, 10, 20, 48. That's, that's, that is what is, is possible and what we should be doing. But what I've managed to do aside from that, um, I, I have this ping the gateway step now. And um, we have our destination, which is the default gateway of that 10, 10, 20. And our result, I'm setting up the result, is device.ping and then that destination. So I'm using the built-in ping function in device. Remember, I'm inside of four device in test bed. I just print it to the screen. We don't need to do that. It's actually just a duplicate set of data because it's already on the screen. Now, that's what I'm trying to do. Now, the exception is an exception that will actually fail. And I'm going to log and print that we could not ping the gateway. So we are rolling back to the startup config. And what I'm doing is device execute, configure, replace, and then back to the startup config force. Right now, that happens to be my test is device.ping. That could be any, right, could be a CDP neighbor, a BGP neighbor, some finely tuned. If, if I've introduced, if I've brought up a cable that has a CRC error, roll back and shut that interface down. I don't know, whatever you can think of, right? I'm doing this for demonstration purposes that we can use the test bed and the test functionalities of something like ping. And then I'm going to say it's failed, self.failed, and print the error out on the screen else otherwise right it didn't have an exception uh, go ahead and have the match and use regex search and print that the success rate is and then the percent the right the rate in then percent result right and then the success rate here for our log info gets printed as the success rate right ping with the success rate of to the destination and the success rate. Now, outside of this, if we've made it to this point, test and see if that success rate was 100. In my case, I'm choosing it. It's got to be 100. Every ping has to answer. Go ahead and log info that we could ping the gateway. So we're saving the config and then do the device execute write mem and can commit it. Else, right? So I could ping right? But maybe I didn't get 100 pings back. We did not get 100%, so then configure that replace rollback again, right? So there's two cases where it could roll back, where it can't ping at all, or if there's less than 100% ping rate, success rate, otherwise do the right mem. Now again, if I, if I had the time thing worked out 100%, I would do this a little differently. I would just invoke the revert command a revert now and revert it immediately uh, aside from this you know instead of doing this config replace from startup config but th it is what it is so far so let me save this and let's go ahead and run it with a success this should ping and I haven't made any changes so this should be item potent and uh, let's go ahead and run it and let me reconnect to the device whoops let me re reconnect to the device And if we keep an eye in the background here, it has replaced the config. There are changes. Oh, I have a rollback test in the description. Okay, so I did have a change. But let's see what happened here. It did do the right mem. So there was a change in the intent, and I'm going to go find that. And that's in the here. 
yeah rollback test okay that's fine let me change that back because that's now in the startup config but anyway you get the idea let me just save that and change it back and um, then we'll look at the pings but but that did write mem and if I'm on the device if I did that show um, all right here it is again so there's the pings and what we do in our log, it actually ping the gateway, commit a rollback. These are all past tests. And we can see that, right, I went back to network interface. And then here's my next step, starting step eight, ping the gateway. And here, right, the little robot for me, PyATS, <laughs> does the ping for me and, and then tells me that the ping to that the IP that we're pinging has a success rate of 100%. And then my rollbacker commit says, well, we could ping the gateway and it was 100%, so go ahead and do the right mem. Pretty incredible. So now, let me just get into the device like I had said here. Um, yeah, let me, just, let me just quickly log in here. So now it's back to its default of network interface so now let's let's make that change again and let's undo that and save it okay so now let's also change the IP to an IP that it won't ping let's just make this dot 200 and save it and rerun it now the ping should fail so what's gonna happen is it's gonna commit and and and, and change that interface description but it's gonna fail the ping and then roll back to the startup config that does not have that interface description. So there, right there, you can see it's just did a plus rollback test right here. And the ping is failing here. You can see that it's not working. So then what happens is we get the error that the failed reason, right, it could not ping it. But before it did that, it rolled back. Right, so ping the gateway, success rate is zero. We have our, we could not ping the gateway, so we're rolling back to startup config, and we roll back to the startup config. So now, even though it did configure that description, if I check the interface, the running config again, it hasn't changed so it did change and then it was undone so that's a simple way to use pi ETS with just with a ping test so now let's go ahead and try something else well I'm gonna stop it there I'm gonna brew up something else where we set up a loopback interface uh, programmatically through the template and data model with an IP address this time then we're gonna see if we can ping that new IP and again if we can if it's a pass means we've successfully brought up the service so write mem otherwise roll back because we we something was wrong right we brought up the loop back with an invalid IP or something we couldn't ping or something so let me play with that a little bit and I'll come back to you soon thanks stick around hey everybody I'm back and what I thought I would do is try to just do this live uh, with our intention of spinning up introducing a new loop back interface with an IP address into the environment and then see what we can do to test before we do a write mem, before we confirm and overwrite the startup config with that config, can we test it a few different ways to make sure that it's up and healthy? And, and if not, roll the, the um, configuration back. So let's take a look here and what I thought we would do. Now remember, we've already played with the loopback. Let me get into the loopback file here. So we have this with just the description and where we left off was here. I'm going to isolate this code so it's easy to see. We have an if statement with an empty else because we never filled in the um, the logic here. So really this is what our if else end if looks like if I break it down. So right in here, I, if it is defined, I'd like to put in the IP address. And then that is going to be a variable which is this key, right? The data model, what we're passing in from the Jinja, this YAML file, 
dot host loopbacks, all right, here, the iteration, when I loop back 100, and then the IP address, which we haven't defined yet. So we're going to put in IP address, and we're going to put in, give this, it's loopback 100, let's make it dot 100, dot 100, 255, 255, 255, now let's let's just make sure that our assumptions are correct and that this is actually going to work for us. So let's just do this quickly, right? So conf t int loop 100 um, IP address 10 10 100 100 255 255 255 and then can we ping it? Ping 10 10 100 100 255 255 255 Whoops, ha, I just ping. sorry, geez, ping. Okay, so we can ping it. So that means that's successful. So we're just going to conf t no int lo100, and it's gone. Can't ping it anymore. So we can put some assurance in with a test. Now, I need the FTP functionality, so let me grab my FTP uh, configs. Uh, from here, because this is a fresh environment, right? So the three steps... I need to pip install the library into the sandbox, which is 10, 10, 20, 50. And then I'm going to make a folder called FTP. And then I'm going to spin up that FTP with a server anonymous, accepting anonymous connections on 2121. So my FTP is all set up and running. And now I'm ready to push this code. And we don't have the test built in yet. So let's go back to the code. So that's going to add loopback 100 with that IP address. 10, 10, 100, 100. And we're going to um, let me fix this Jinja2 template and make this pretty again. Uh, that should do it. That should make that valid. Again, so if it's defined, then IP address and the IP address else no IP address. All right, good. Now, let's go into our Python where our test is set up. And here's our original test of ping the gateway. Now, I mean, I'm going to do this because it's pretty fast, but I think, right, we know that if I say ping the loopback, and I change this to loopback, and let's make this our new IP that we want to ping, and then, right, could not ping the loop back loop back loop back so now instead of pinging the gateway we're going to see if we can ping this interface if if we right as we bring it up to confirm and add assurance to our automation so let's let's have uh, let's get the thing running here and everything is up and running. My FTP server is up and running. So I should be able to just run the code. And let's keep an eye on the code. Let's just maximize this. And we should see, all right. So it's replaced it. And there's our ping. And so it did the right mem. Let's just take a closer look here. So here we bring up the um, IP address and loopback interface, right? There is a change. And then we ping that loopback interface. And we can see that, right, pinging 100, right, success rate of 100. We could ping the loopback, so we're saving the config, and we do the right mem. So we've added some configuration assurance to this. Now, can we... Um, let me... Like, what if we wanted to do both? Can we, can we do like a for loop of pings and ping the gateway and the loopback? I, I don't see why not, but we could also... I haven't done a right mem yet, so now if I log into this device and do a show run, oh, it's, I've lost my session. Uh, two seconds here, so as I log back in, I'm just gonna log back into the device and show you that that loop back is here with the IP address. And there it is. Now, 
let's um let's know that out and you know, I could do it programmatically by removing it but I, I'm going to show you what I, where I'm going with this no int lo 100 and it's gone so now let's let's make the ping something that it can't ping right let's try that 10 10 20 200 and see if it will roll back so we know that it will set up the loop back now if we can't ping will we end up without the loop back that assurance kicking in to say look I don't want to deploy a bad config or a config that does not bring up my service so let's just do this with the false the, the, the ping that's going to fail and it'll pause on the screen long enough here when the ping starts to fail so right here we have added that interface and now we're trying to ping a different IP I don't know just to show that we could not ping it we get the error and it failed and we rolled back so now if I do that show run it's not there no it is there huh what happened to the rollback I maybe I did a write mem aha okay it was in it was in the startup hang on uh, I have to do that again no int lo 100 and then I have to write mem here so now that it's not in startup let's just do that whole thing again I don't want to cheat I don't want to be accused of a cheater of using sleight of hand here that was a mistake. I forgot that the first job ran to completion, which does a write mem, which put loop back into startup, which is what we rolled back to. So it's still there. So let's, you know, let's roll back to a config. So there again, it's plugged in the interface. Our ping is failing. It's rolling back right now. It's failing out of the task. And now if I do that show run in loop 100, it is not there. All right, so let's try to do some compounded logic here. And uh, what I'm going to do is turn this into a for loop and try to loop over my destinations and do multiple pings to multiple different. Okay, so I've gone ahead and adjusted this to be a for loop. And let's look at the little adjustments we've made. So it's now just, you know, the ping test. And um, I'll probably leave it this way, even if it's just one address. We have a destination list where we just have to put them in quotes and comma separate them and then we do a for loop for each destination in the destination list and that is what we're going to ping and now what is what do we have to do to help handle this well I only want to do the right mem if that success rate is 100 for each of them so I've set a little flag here called failed and I'm setting it to false and then per iteration through the loop if that success rate does not equal 100 change failed to true so it'll stay false provided that I get 100 response ping success rate through each iteration of the loop now down here if failed is true well then roll it back and send the message that we could not ping so we're rolling back otherwise go ahead and write mem the other thing that will exit here is if we can't ping any of them at all it will just crash and um, not do the right mem and it will do the rollback here right so we have a couple of cases that could roll it back now just to show here that I'm not cheating in any way we do the show run and there is no loopback 100 and in our data model again to remind you and to anchor you I want to loop back with an IP I've put that in as YAML and it has the IP of 100 which I'm going to ping after I bring it up and if I can't ping it or the default gateway now I'd like it to roll back to the startup config otherwise go ahead and write mem so here we go it moves pretty fast but I'll bring it back up so right now I should have the loop back in memory and I do now whether or not it stays depends on the ping tests and it stayed and everything passed so if we roll the back up here this is pretty interesting here's my ping to the gateway and here's my ping to the loop back that we just instantiated pretty neat now let's remove that and and take it out of memory conf t no int lo 100 right mem and now let's make it fail 
and see if it triggers a rollback. Meaning, I don't know, let's change this to 101. And maybe, you know, I want to assume the test is good, but maybe this is a validation that, oh, hang on, I instantiated it as 100 and it should be 101, right? We can have that layer of protection here and not commit the wrong IP. So let's go ahead and run it with a bad IP. And this will stop. This will be nice enough to stop because the ping will start to fail and it'll pause. But I, let me do that show loopback thing again. Right? So it's in, me whoops, ah, whoops. It was in memory. I just hit the wrong command. But now, let me just do this. No int lo100. Ah. Yeah, it's going to, I screwed that up. It's still there because I did the right mem. I forgot that was in the command buffer. Yeah, now it's there. Let's do that again. Let's do that again. No int LO100. I don't mind demonstrating again. And write mem. And let's just get that there. So there is no loopback 100. Let's run this again. And as we see, the ping test failed. So it did crash and it did roll back, but me fat fingering the right mem. The CLI sucks. That's why we do automation is to not make mistakes like that. <laughs> All right. Anyway, here we go. So now it's present. Now, whether or not it stays is the result. So the ping test is failing here. Um, our assurance should kick in and it should do that. Here's the rollback. And now it's gone. Now, I'm going to switch back over to me for a second here. That's pretty incredible. Now, that's ping testing. And overnight, and in the car and stuff, I've been thinking a little bit more about this. And I want to highlight something. So what are we doing? Really, what are we doing? We have the router. And the first step that we do is to get the config. And we have the config in JSON here. Now, if we can imagine us as our steps, we build an intent. We push that intent. And then we run tests that either pass or fail, that either go ahead and proceed to a new write mem, or throw away the changes and, and revert to this step based on our pass fail. Now, what we have here is an opportunity. Oh, also, hang on. Um, after we've pushed this config, we recapture the JSON state. Now let's focus on these two bits of JSON that we have, and I'll show you them on the screen. But what we have here is an opportunity to do even more assurance and more safety checks. And I hate deploying to a dirty environment. There's nothing worse than compounding problems and putting bad, you know, potentially good code or bad code on top of bad code, right? I've added a route and I'm expecting something to happen. Well, maybe the router wasn't ready for that or the interface is down or right i need to make sure that the state of this is ready for a new config well i have the json that we can test right here before i even decide to send it a config then again after i've pushed the config yeah i can run those ping tests those are incredible ping 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 and if that's good well i can also check what equals what? What is greater than or less than? I can do Boolean tests against the JSON pre-change, post-change, then make this decision whether or not to commit or roll back based on even more intelligent testing from the state of the device. So let's, let's take a look at what I'm talking about here. So right up front, Remember, I say, right, I talk about this very early, pre write pre-change file. Well, even forget the file. In memory, I have the original learned config. Inside of this variable right here, I'm going to show you what I have. We have it as an artifact as well. But inside of the Lancelot golden image, let's see the original golden image. This is what I, this line 73 original learn config is this json on the right i happen to be expressing it as a file called dot json with the timestamp but think of this as what's accessible to us in memory 
So I can do quite a bit of upfront testing and post change testing. So let's, let's try to do some tests here. And what I'm going to do is, let me do this. Um, and this is ambitious and I haven't pre-staged any of this. Uh, and not me, no shutting these ports. I'll show you what I'm talking about being ambitious. Um, and I'm going to make sure that these come up. <coughs> I'm going to wait till all the interfaces are up. The sandbox starts with only GI1 up and 2 and 3 are down. So now they're up. So now if I were to recapture this, this shutdown wouldn't say, wouldn't be present. Um, now this is, this is the learned config, so we can test the configurations, but we can also do things like add in the parse command and parse a command like show IP interface brief and test against that show parsed command. I think I'm going to try that, um, because I, I guess what I could do is say for each interface, if interface dot shutdown, you know, is defined, meaning if the interface is shut, then don't proceed with the change. So maybe we can try that with the data that we already have, and then um, look at adding the learn capability and testing a command. All right, so now what we're going to do is just put in, so we have the pre-change file, um, create the intent in the data model and push. Well, what if we were to just put in a step here that is our test after this original config and then proceed with the rest of the code, right? So that's, that's where my placeholder is going to go, is here, right? And I'm going to say, confirm all interfaces are up first something like this now again with the JSON side by side um, you can see that there is a key called shutdown if it is shut down and there's an absence of shutdown if it's enabled so here's the quick logic that we have is some with steps and let me just change this to be pre-change interface check and um, as a step so I'm going to set again a little flag all interfaces are up equals true we're going to start with the assumption that they're all up and then set up an interface list now because each of these is its own interface right there isn't meaning there isn't a parent key called host interfaces then with each of the interfaces so it's hard for us to loop over these so instead I've just set up my own little list of keys here and then I'm checking for each interface in my list if shutdown is in that key in interface and then you know interface so interface space GI2 right if shutdown is there print the interface is shut down otherwise print the interfaces up that's just how I'm testing it now I'm going to make make or break logic here now further down here I would just say you know if all interfaces up equals true continue on with all of the rest of the code otherwise um, you know don't do anything else just print an error that the all of the interfaces were not up so we did not proceed with the change so right now, ignore the JSON. I've no shut the interfaces, and I did a, I did a write mem so that um, if it rolls it back, at least all of the interfaces are up. But there is no loopback 100 right now. And again, back to our change, um, we have the loopback 100 still in our data model. So it's going to hopefully configure this. Now I don't have any logic saying otherwise. So we will have to know that out and write mem at the end of this job. But let's look at our new, or actually I'll try to cancel it before it gets anywhere near pushing the config. I don't know if I'm fast enough to do that. But I want to show you our test. So let me cancel it there. Yeah, I got, I got to it in time. Now here we can see all three interfaces are up. Now I could shut one of these and show that that would be down, but just take my word for it, that works. 
So now let's go ahead and wrap the rest of our code around that test. Now the other thing that we could do is copy this test and add loopback uh, zero to confirm that our new interface came up up. So let's do that before we mess with any other logic and it's going to be um, you know let's let's put it here because this is roughly where I'm going to put that test before I commit or roll back and then that is that in line with everything uh, I see I see I'm gonna have to move that over it's in the way of this I'm breaking that let's just let's just confirm them after we've committed I guess for now For each destination. I'm just trying to see where I could put this in without. I guess I could just nest it in a little bit further. That's not going to do any harm. Let's just tab that in there. Whoops. Tab that in there. So then with those steps, do that for loop, commit to the for loop, and then do the interface test. And then let's, we have to add loop back 100. Now I believe it's capital O loop back. 100 comes uh, let's let's make sure I don't want to have a false positive capital L all 100 all right all right show run all right, all right. So that's that's pretty good. And again, we'll do the same thing, right? We'll add this to be if failed equals true, if failed equals true, and if something else, right? Now, one thing we also have to do here before we move on is um, I'm checking the original here from my copy paste. I'm going to need to change that to the new config, which is the post change new learned config. So let's make sure that we're making that change here here yeah otherwise it won't find this loopback 100 because it's checking the pre-change state all right let's try this and what we should see is the pre-change check all three interfaces are up go ahead and put the config in show us all four interfaces are up ping the gateway ping the loopback write the mem if everything looks good so here comes the ping tests and then we should see somewhere in here Right here, right? Interface. Oh, see, shut down. Mom, why are they shut down? Oh, they're down. All right, well, anyway, that was just me. So, anyway, that's why we're doing the testing. So, let me, you know, conf t no int lo100 and let me do um, int range gi2 to 3 no shut and let me write the mem. Let me write mem. Ugh, it's resolving. Um, at the typo there and then we'll build in the logical tests to say right don't even push it because the interfaces are not all up or conversely right further down don't write the mem because all the interfaces are not up including our new loopback interface is not up so I'm gonna go ahead and write that in as we wait for that uh, DNS to time out and uh, then what we'll do is, uh, so once we're through with just what we've learned, we can add a, a show command into parse and check its JSON and add it to our test suite as well. All right, stay tuned. I'm going to write the rest of these tests real quick. I'll be back. So I've integrated these as tests and let's just do the interface. Oops. Yeah. Uh, let's make interface brief. Okay. So everything is up. It's a healthy state and there's no loop back one hundred which we're going to push in here with an IP address and here now we have this extra padding where we're going to learn the original config and then we're going to test that interface list and at the end of those tests if interface up remains true go ahead and log info the device is healthy proceeding with deployment and then do all of that original logic inside of the block else log sorry all the interfaces were not up canceling the deployment if we've made it into the deployment, then we're also going to, I see, I didn't write this test yet to, to proceed. Uh, yes, no, I have. I'm sorry. If um, at the end we go through that list and check for loopback 100 now, and again, if failed is true, 
I see, and this should be or, or all interfaces up equals false. So if any of our pings fail, these two pings we're doing, or if any of those interfaces is now not, is shut down for some reason, log that we could not ping or interfaces are down, so we're rolling back the startup config. All right, so now I don't know how I would test that because if I shut the interface, I guess what I could do is shut an interface as part of the deployment to test that scenario. But let's run it in a healthy state right now without um, too much messing around. And um, I'm gonna, uh, I'll come back to the log, but we, we should get a loopback 100 and it should write it to memory. Uh, and I was wrong, it failed because interface is shut down is interface shut down yeah they're administratively down okay well hey look at the, look at that i don't want to deploy to an unhealthy environment so the interfaces are shut it just says nope i'm not going to deploy it and it actually logs here somewhere i think yeah sorry all of the interfaces were not up so we canceled the deployment well look at that my own guardrails have saved me so in range two to three uh in range gi two to three no shut it's getting a little long and there is no loop back 100 let's make sure they're up up okay now they're up up so now now it should proceed past the interface check but that's what we're talking about here don't deploy if the environment's not healthy and it's moved on through the deployment and i'll scroll back up to the the top of this so there's our push, our loop back, there's our ping tests, and it should have done an interface check as well. Now I should change this to say post change interface check. Let's make sure we do that now because that, that will really help us here. This is going to say post change interface check. And then let's look at our logs. If I can go up and find, it shouldn't be too hard to find the start of this. So we just ran this job. Sorry, all the interfaces were not up, so we, we canceled the deployment. Oh, whoops, we no shut the interfaces. And then it proceeds and says, uh, go ahead and um, learn config. So now we should have a banner or a log info that says, right, interfaces are up. The device is healthy, proceeding with the deployment. And then it proceeds with the deployment. As of here, we have the loopback inside of the new config. We're relearning the config. We can see there's the loopback, and we see it in the diff as well here. And now we're running our ping tests, our post change tests. Pings work, pings work. Now, is there should be a post interface check? I don't know why it thinks interfaces are shut down. I think I'm actually shutting down interfaces. It's not quite working, my logic at the end, because it should have rolled back. Oh, and it did roll back. Look at that. We could not ping or interfaces are down, so we're rolling back the startup config. I'm like 0 for 2 here where, where my own tests have saved me. So it looks like I'm shutting down the interfaces. Yeah, we, we've never no shut them in our intent. So this means we should not have a loopback 100 right now, and our interfaces are down. All right. So let's no shut those interfaces. I, I, I swear I didn't mean for the, either one of those things to happen, but it looked like it turns out. So now they're no shut. Now, <laughs> okay, let's go to our intent and find these interfaces. Well, look, enabled false enabled true haha -ha. so now let's say true here and true here so now let's see if we can push the loop back and keep those interfaces up all right let's give it a spin and uh, I'm gonna get the this here open so what we're hoping for is that all three interfaces stay up and then we get a new loop back with an IP that's also up up we can ping our gateway and we can ping that IP and everything looks good and if I do IP interface brief there's our IP it's up up and um, right interface is up interface up interface is up 
we could ping and all interfaces up so we're saving the config. So if I were to reload this box, that would be in there. So we've tested all of the different scenarios with just with the information that we've already captured and learned, both the pre and post change. We can interject and stop the deployment if our environment is not deemed healthy from our tests. Or we can test post change before we write and commit to memory and trigger a rollback because we don't like the state that we've introduced to the device. Now let's look at some show commands and see if we can parse a show command and do something similar. I'm going to get this going in the background and then I'll come back to you. I hope you're enjoying this and I'll see you soon. Don't go anywhere. We're not done yet. All right, so here in our confirm all interfaces are up in our pre-step, let's go ahead and add something from our existing learn uh, library of commands, right? So we're going to go to the um, Merlin here and let's pick routing. Let's do learned routing. All right, so we're going to learn routes here after we learn the original config. And then we're going to have right self.learned routing that we can key into. So let's just print that on the screen so you get an idea of what is in self.learned routing here. Let's just print that on the screen. And then we can determine what tests we want. I was thinking the default route might be a good test. So let's just run the code and we'll cancel it after we have the JavaScript object notation printed on the screen of the learned routes. And then we'll pick in to the parse learn function is not defined. Oh, whoops, I forgot to include my own libraries. Hang on. I have to parse learn config. I also need parse learn function from the general functionalities file. Parse learn function, which is going to do this, by the way, and we're feeding in learn routing here. So let me add that there and rerun the code. Yep, minor mistake. And then we'll cancel this before it gets too far. I just want to see what the JavaScript looks like and we can code against it for our test for the default route. So let me cancel this. And here is the routes. So we can we can head into the VRF default address family IP4 route and let's find the 000 route. And then we want to go into the next hop, next hop list. Uh, one index next hop. We want to get into this key of next hop. So we want to test that the next hop for the default route hasn't been changed at all. So let's try to write that Pythonically in a test here. So let's um, we'll just copy this here. And so after all confirming all interfaces are up, we're going to confirm the default route. And as a pre-check, it's not very good to us, but we can also do it as a post-check. So let's actually, let's just move this to the bottom and make it a post-check uh, down here. So confirm all, I'm going to paste that in here. Actually, I guess I can just do this instead. Whoops. This is going to be confirm the default route is unchanged. So now that we have, uh, let's set that default route here. So we're going to say default pre-change, right? Pre-change default route equals and it's going to equal self self learn routing right so we're just gonna maybe make this a little easier on myself I should just pull that into VS code as a JSON file but let's just do it this way so um, I need to be in VRF and default and address family IPv4 
routes, whoops, routes, and then the route is 0, 0, 0, slash 0, right? And then we need to key into next hop. I think using DQ, there's probably a better way to do this. I know there's a better way to do this, but for now on the fly, let me just do it this way. And we just keep keying in one index, no, next hop. All right, so that should set. And now instead of printing the whole thing, let's print the, ch the pre-changed, change default route and then we're going to do this same thing after the change so show differential ping test so where do I learn recapture state right here let's recapture the learning and we're going to change this to post and then down here we're let me just grab that post and pre in our test confirm the default route is unchanged and this is a post change default route test and I should be all done with that and I'm not going to worry I don't need any of this all right so if pre and post change pre change and post change do not work then we're going to say right bad default route equals true and then we're going to say right log it as bad default route versus um, unchanged default route. And then down here, we have to add the extra condition here, just another or bad default route equals true. Now, I mean, I'm not gonna be able to break the default route, it'll break the whole lab. But let's just try this test. Now, again, I, I hope that I've keyed into that properly. Um, and I key into it twice and I print it twice. So let's just try to see that. And again, it's just a, it's more of a creative exercise to give you an idea of, right, that could be BGP neighbors, that could be OSPF neighbors, it could be CRC errors, it could be anything. Whoops, ha, huh, something's wrong. Oh, I need the colons, yeah. Um, here. Try that again. As I was saying, um, it can be almost anything we want. If we can get the JSON and get into the key, we can test a Boolean test that's greater than, less than, equals to, greater than, or equals to, whatever you want. If it equals a certain value. Key error one, yeah. Next hop list, it doesn't like that. All right, so let me... Okay, that didn't take very long at all, and I'm, I, I've sorted out. Let's change up some of these comments as well since we've added a new test. But uh, just to show you why that crashed, um, I had the one as a string, and it's an integer, so we don't need the quotes around it. That, that was all that was. Uh, real quick, I probably should have just fixed that and shown you the fix. Um, anyway, let's let's change default route test down here. Uh, right, We want to change these messages a little bit, so if it crashes... Um, Right, so if all interfaces are up, go ahead. And we're, we're just testing the default route there. And then, right, so there's nothing until the bottom here. This is where we would say we could ping. All interfaces are up. And default route is unchanged. Let's see if this works. And um, I also want to print... Where's my test here? Bad route. Unchanged default route. So that's if that does not equal that, then set the bad route to be true. 
which becomes one of our OR conditions, and info bad default route, otherwise log unchanged default route. So let me know out the, you know, no int LO100 again. Right, mem not that I'm expecting the default route to change. This is going to pass. Again, this is a creative exercise, and I have limited things to work with because it's the DevNet sandbox, and there's not a whole lot of things configured on here. But it's to get you thinking, it's to get you realizing um, the realm of the possible with Pi ATS, and pre-change tests, post-change tests, assurance, state validation, artificial intelligence, lots of different ways to look at it. So then right post change default route test passed post change interface check passed pre change interface check passed looking good looking good let me um here let's run the other let's run the main merlin s uh let's run this main job and populate the data set and poke around the json and see again this is the uh whoops ha ah. This is the where the you know this is where it all started was just this main Merlin job which um, you'll see what it does it, it generates intent files but what I want to do is build those intent files so I can poke around the JSON and see if there's something of value we can test beyond the default route now the default route test all worked and um, if I show IP interface brief there's the loopback 100 so all those tests passed. But let's just capture the data. I suppose I didn't explore the. Um, this is just going to take a second to write all the files. So now let's let's run the other one with the tests again. I didn't show you the logging that it will show you that those things matched and everything, but but since it did distribute the loop back, we can assume that it all worked. But in these cookie crumbs as logs, we have the messages that say whether or not right here right if I scroll up a bit we have our interfaces are up our ping tests results unchanged default route so then it goes ahead and says we could ping all interfaces are up and default route is unchanged so we're saving the config let's quickly hop into the Camelot Cisco DevNet um, so there's ARP interface routing inventory IP ARP IP interface brief see we're sort of already testing the interfaces but I could test right if I show you this JSON here in this whoops this JSON see in this one I could loop over each of the interfaces um, and then use those up down statuses right so this is sort of like the learned interfaces except it has the VLAN interfaces as well so I could test the SVIs I could turn up an SVI or change an SVI's IP. Lots of stuff here we could test with, right? Just to give you an idea. So let's wrap it up there. This has been a pretty long video, and I know I've covered a lot of ground here. But, um, right, the whiteboard still shows what I was talking about, where <laughs> it's a mess. Uh, is it upside down? It's upside down. It's hard to even tell with my handwriting. Where, go get your JSON. Run some tests. Before you do anything else, is it healthy? Is it is it going to pass the tests that I define before I muck with it, before I change configs? Use the TFTP system and the config replace system for item potent configuration changes. Then go recapture the JSON, test again, and make the determination whether or not you should commit or roll back based on any suite of tests you like. Um, I encourage you to find the Pi ETS WebEx channel. Follow certain people on Twitter, the WebEx, the, the Pi ETS development team. This is something that's going to be more and more present in your industry if you're a network engineer. Um, automated deployments, automated validation, and assurance and testing using instrumentation and robots, not humans, or syslog or SNMP or something, right? So best of luck to you, and I'm here to help. Reach out to me on Twitter, automateyournetwork.ca, star the GitHub, find me on LinkedIn and connect with me. Let's change the world, all right? Stay safe, everybody.